everyone, and welcome to Twillow Talk. We are so honored today to have uh, our special guest, Jeff Pulver, joining us. Hello, Jeff. Thank you Hello, for joining. Good afternoon. <laughs> and I'm also joined by my beautiful co-host, uh, Jennifer Jarkovsky. So, um, <laughs> would you like to introduce yourself and give us a little bit of an idea about sort of what you do, what you have done, because you've you've had some great accomplishments and. Love to hear about those. Oh, I'm just a guy um, <laughs> who sees the future and sometimes helps change uh, change things it's for the better, in my opinion, my humble opinion. Uh, depending upon what perspective we take, you know, I'm someone who advocates living in the now. The only moment we have is the one we share at that moment. Uh, so I don't really, while I look to the past to remember, I really look to the future to be. And I advocate being in the state and the flow of, and the, really the state of now is where we're all at. Uh, in terms of who I have been and what I have done, uh, I'd like to believe that I've had a positive impact in the way the world communicates, in the way that um, people around the world connect to each other. Historically, in the last 26 years, I have helped influence uh, uh, some good public policy work and brought some companies to life, which helped facilitate the ability for people around the world to talk and in some ways helped influence creating platforms like this, where we take it for granted that no matter where you are in the world, if you're connected to broadband, you have the ability to see and talk to someone you want to. And we're able to facilitate the ability to do shows like this without inside, inside of uh, production facilities, uh, studios. So anyway, I've done all that kind of stuff. and. I, I spend a, my free time, I spend uh, under the stars, helping people to find center and to breathe and to connect and really to find balance and um, maybe themselves along the way. So I, I do a, a whole range of things. I help others see what's going on what they can't see themselves. And um, most importantly, I, I like being where I am, wherever I am uh, and just being present. So. Uh, I, I can say more, but you could always Google it. It's, it's uh, why, why share what you can Google? <laughs> well, you, we need to ask people to check out your your photographs because you're you're asking. Yes, yeah, so if they like this, if, they, if people, people watching the show enjoy photographs of the night sky, one of my absolute passions in the world is photographing the Milky Way, and combined with photographing people in awe of the magic of the galactic center of the Milky Way. So I have. Uh, photographs on Instagram where you can see some of that. And literally for every one picture posted, I probably have about 500 plus outtakes of that picture because I'm pretty fanatical when it comes to capturing moments. And so uh, I do that. So I, I, I do encourage uh, people to embrace the night sky, stay away from light pollution and to feel the energy of the universe as, uh, as some have seen it before. And unfortunately, future generations won't be able to. So uh, I sometimes travel to places to feel the universe and just be. Awesome. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's so nice. So I just want to say a quick hello to Annie and Krista. Guys, nice to see you here. Um, so it's for any of us too. Uh, you're welcome to put them in the chat and we'll uh, address them as they come up. Jen, why don't you tell us a little bit about you as well, please? Do your little intro. Sure. Well, though I don't do much on the uh, astrophotography side, I did move into the country in order to get out of the light pollution and be able to see that big, beautiful sky away yeah. <laughs> much better. Um, and so I definitely appreciate um, you taking the time to honor that. Um, and what I do, I am a uh, practitioner and a teacher with Twilo Lifestyle Academy. And I also am a psychotherapist, life coach, counselor with my holistic self. And I am a Reiki master, uh, aqua lead master, Nocti practitioner, uh, and so many other things that, you know, <laughs> I <to> talk about. <laughs> ordained minutes, you know, all of that kind of stuff too. <laughs> you know, there's, there's, there's a lot. <laughs> pieces of paper that say I know how to do something. <laughs> yeah. I have a couple of those. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Life experience that speaks so much better. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It's much more about the experience, right? Mm -hmm. So as typically we do on Twillow Talk, um, we will be picking a card from this deck, here, the Wisdom Cards by Diana Cooper and Greg Stewart. And we will pick a topic that we're going to uh, jump into a discussion about. Uh, so we'll say hello to Shem while we're up, while we're doing that. Hi, Shem. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. And let's see what the guides have for us today. Oh my goodness. I'm having a lot of, we, we must have a lot of them present because I'm like full of goosebumps right now. <laughs> they must want a very specific card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, well, which one then? Oh, there we go. All right, what have we got? Oh, very nice. So our card today is the opportunity. Opportunity. So let's read what it has to say. It says, when the time is right and you're prepared to act with courage, fortune awaits you. Picking this card signifies that a situation is now turning in your favor. Be watchful and alert, ready to grasp the opportunity that is about to present itself. Choose wisely, for there may be more than one option. Then go with the flow. Of course, you can use strength and energy to struggle against the current you to seize a chance today, for it will lead effortlessly to greater things. And the affirmation is, I am alert to opportunities. I think that's something that you specialize in, Jeff. <laughs> I, I well look. I, I'm a fan of opportunities. I'm also a fan of helping to manifest opportunities for yourself or for what you're doing. And it's like when opportunity knocks, open the damn door. You know, don't yeah. run away. Uh, you know, it's like when in the morning, in, in, when you walk outside, do you walk in harm's way? Do you walk in luck's way? If you don't walk out the door, you're not going anywhere, right? But if it Right. If the door was prompted with opportunity and a path to follow, follow it. And then understand also that, of course, some of the best opportunities, some of the best deals somebody can make are the deals they say no to. So particularly when you have more than one opportunity to, 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 to figure out, finding the best, the, the best opportunity on paper may not be the best opportunity for you. Because it, in, embedded in the, in the opportunities, so occasionally is a, is a change to your lifestyle, a change to your to what others have priorities for you. Mm -hmm. And so you know, finding, maintaining work life balance, uh, remaining maintaining self love and being able to have a practice that facilitates and brings opportunities forward, but not at the cost of giving yourself the light that you need. And, 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 and people seem to forget that with great opportunities, people at times forget about to stand in the light that they create. That it's one thing to bring something forward to help others, a group, if you will, but at the same time, bring the, you know, shine in the opportunities that you did. It's not so much to brag because it's not about bragging. It's just to stand in your light because frankly, no one else can if you don't. So, so allow that light to be present, embrace it. And when you bring light into something, others can see who are otherwise blind. So I, I believe opportunity opens so many things. And it's the opportunities mm -hmm. that we don't even realize are possible that help shift the way that we see. Very nice. Yeah, uh, I'm reminded of, you know, in your introduction, when you talked about being present in the now too right and that idea of opportunity and you know what you said about you know the opportunity to also say no and so i reflect you know from a human design perspective and looking at how you know we each have a different role depending on our type and, and all of that and we show up in different ways and opportunities will come to us but we have to really reflect is this opportunity right for us in this moment? Is it where we're supposed to go? Are we meant to take that direction? Or is this an opportunity to say no so that we can open to another opportunity, right? And so just kind of, I, I really appreciate that piece of staying very present and aware and not just jumping at something because it is an opportunity, but that idea of openness to be able to reflect, is this the right one for me? Is this not the right one for me? which way am I supposed to go from here? And then using that inner guidance 
to really make that decision. Yeah, the inner guidance that is, is that heart space, right? Like feeling into it with your heart versus with your head sort of thing, right? You, I think you said something about that, right? Jeff? Yeah, well, it's, it's the heart, it's the head, and then you have that, that intermixing of serendipity and synchronicity right. with those opportunities. Because sometimes that you, some, there's an opportunity that could be a business opportunity, it could be a love opportunity, it could be an opportunity to embrace and to discover a new passion. It's like we don't know necessarily what that opportunity will bring, but if you're open to it, it will be there. If you're close to it, even if the opportunity was meant to be, you could block it. And so, you know, sometimes we block things that are kind, that are meant to bring kindness and love to us. But if we're too shielded and too protected, it doesn't come through. So, right. so we, you know, in the morning, you know, when you have those affirmations, if you allow yourself to be open to opportunities that are present and let them come through and be present in your flow too, you can get guided by where it can offer, can go. And sometimes, frankly, an opportunity for you is really an opportunity for a friend or a loved one. And really you happen to be a way station for that opportunity to get to the other person. So it's not, don't be selfish to think every opportunity that's presented is just for you. Sometimes it's actually meant for people around you, but you're the one who it comes to, and then it's shared outward. Or sometimes it's shared inward and others feel it. So it's, there are lots of different types of opportunities, both with light and with love, with vibration, energy, and frequencies. So it's it both the physical and other realms. So it's uh, they're very unbounded in both where they come from, where they can go, and only perhaps limited by how you can see and feel and experience those opportunities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So that's beautiful. And I love that idea that opportunity isn't just for us. And, you know, Shem's comment, the great, you know, with great opportunity comes great responsibility. And it's so true that we we sometimes get opportunities to, to do things or to look at things and they really aren't for us. And I think that that's a beautiful piece to, to bring into the conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, you know, I always, I think, I think of opportunity and being open to it as just you know, listening, because oftentimes, you know, I joke about I just do what I'm told. <laughs> the guides are telling me what I'm supposed to do, and I just do what I'm told. <laughs> so it comes mm -hmm. like that. Sometimes I don't even realize, I don't even think about it as being like an opportunity. It's just, I just do it because it's just where I'm drawn to or what I'm meant to do, right? So I think that is part of that openness to being open to opportunity. The, the hard part is for someone who is hurt or shut down, who's looking for work, looking looking for love, looking for something to give a sign. And, at, you know, and it's hard sometimes to communicate, to say, hey, just be open to opportunity, it'll come to you. Because yeah. that's counterintuitive depending upon what line of logic or reasoning they're looking for or looking at. But if they just allow themselves to be open and not question the source of the message, mm -hmm. but the message says, by the way, at 10.02 tonight, look to the left and look right. up and see what you see. That may very well connect to a to place to be because, again, not every opportunity is physical. Mm -hmm. uh, and frankly, sometimes it's going to be other senses that are, that get to get tipped off. And then it's your own inner sensitivity, too. So opportunities, certainly, if you're looking at an ecosystem, uh, no matter where you are, right? If you can help create opportunities for others, that's a beautiful thing for you to help others see. Yeah. Um, and, and again, you know, having the balance to understand that, well, okay, there are three opportunities out there. Which one should I take or not take? And so there's those roads less traveled too, right? There's a lot to be said about taking that left instead of the right and going straight and getting a little lost during the day. Um, so that you could find yourself somewhere which you never otherwise would have gotten to had you decided to take the opportunity in the big city and not give yourself the opportunity to find yourself in the woods someplace or someplace with deep quiet. So there's there are balances, there are checks, and at the end of the day, I think those that bring the opportunities into the world are those who help others, you know, in many other ways too. And, and that of itself is the opportunity. So it's it's right. So you can get direction from it. You can also 
take that as a building block to, to bring out next more things and, and, and additional things. And again, there are some people who complain, oh my God, I have so many opportunities, I don't know what to do. It's sort of like when someone applies to university and they applied to 12 colleges and, and, and seven said yes, like, what are you gonna do? You're overwhelmed with the choice to make. Well, you brought it upon yourself by taking, going applying to so many places when you perhaps don't even wanna go to any of them. But, but now you're forcing yourself to do that and it's the same thing with going for work interviews or, or taking on too many clients. It's like you have a great problem in scaling. And then yeah. all of a sudden, and I have seen this, people worry about their success. It's actually, it, it's not, they're not worrying about failure. What they're worried about is how to handle the, the opportunity of success and what that brings upon. And you'd be surprised to actually see how people change when they're primed for, well, where they're getting this unleashing of, of, of gifts coming to them and they're so overwhelmed, they're not prepared for that success and scares them. So they're they're pretty uh, pretty strong when it comes to failure, being protected. They they actually have been overly protective, but the 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 blind spot is their successes. And so I, I think opportunity is a wonderful word to open up where we can all go. And I and I do believe if we allow positive manifestations, we open keep ourselves open for the light. That that is just the start of something really special and, and magical too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, when yeah. we let light and love in for our decisions, you know, magic happens yeah. for sure. Right? I, I believe magic happens all the time, which we're, we're just sometimes blind to it. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. As you as you're speaking, I'm reminded of um, Marianne Williamson's, you know, our deepest fear poem, right? That she that she writes about about how you know our deepest fear is really you know how powerful we are right that we're powerful beyond measure and embracing that and and living that and that doesn't necessarily mean opportunity in the three D <laughs> right it, right yeah, and, and, and you know exactly. part, part of that challenge also comes from who you choose to live your life around and with because sometimes mm -hmm. if you have great opportunity coming to you you might very well find yourself attracting uh, energy vampires and, and people who actually very passively, not even so so aggressively, but people who will take away your light and in and, and some ways distract you because mm -hmm. they can, because they are drawn into your success and they take away things and, 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 and you find yourself fending off these, these vampires when you really want to be focusing on anything but <laughs> and, and 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 just even admit that these these entities exist um and so shielding yourself from that and at the same time going forward is hard but you, you know it's just you know the world is you know the the worlds we live in are filled with narcissists we're fine we, we're, we're filled with no matter how much good you want to bring there'll mm -hmm. be some people who won't break you anyway and then of course there's a whole genre of people that are dismissive of the light because they just don't see they're blind to it so they'd rather think it doesn't exist than it be something which they mm -hmm. don't understand so so there's that so I, I i try never to try always focusing on doing there are no excuses mm -hmm. it's like literally it's never to try you do what you with intention you live by intention if you live by the opportunity you live by the light you are doing and if you see people who need to be protected and they're open to being protected, protect. If you see an opportunity for yourself to go somewhere, if you choose to go, go. But it's like, you know, often it's the opportunities we don't take now that we can never go back to. It's like if you listen to read song lyrics and just listen to the messages from uh, from generations before us, no one really talks about how happy they were about opportunities they missed. It's those dreams yeah. unfulfilled where people get get sorrow. So if you want to live your dream, please do so. Mm -hmm. And allow that opportunity to then present itself. And don't be afraid if you say no, that another opportunity won't be there because the opposite is most likely to happen. If you've ever played a board game in your life, if you've ever spun the dice and played the game of, of can, play Candyland or go and play the hooks and ladders or, or, or truths and ladders, you will find that when you roll the dice, magic can happen and that the most crazy, wonderful things are there. You just have to allow yourself the chance to win. And winning, by the way, is not necessarily a goal other than completing a journey. 
And the beautiful thing about this is that our journeys are unbounded and, and not necessarily are they numbered. We just allow just one opportunity will flow into the next, but then creates a, a greater opportunity of light and energy around us. So to, to allow ourselves to feel that, to be sensitive to it and to protect it, that is um, also an opportunity. That's true. Your work, <laughs> the protection piece. <laughs> Do you have any shielding uh, techniques that you use, Jeff, in terms of dealing with those energies? Many. Factors? Yeah, well, it depends upon, you know, there's also all deep rooted attachments, too, right? You have, you, you have, you have the shielding from some, from some who are trying, who are attacking from afar, and, and uh, then others who have put, you know, planted roots or otherwise have somehow uh, attached themselves and you want to detach and break those ties even if surprisingly people don't even realize that they someone else rooted in them until they get rid of them and then they're much freer because they they, they don't realize until afterwards all of a sudden what their thinking changed and they feel much safer and they're, they're not so paranoid and they actually are more open to relationships or open to even just being open because they're so afraid of being judged. You know, there, the opportunity means many things. Uh, one of them is really to allow yourself to be present, right? And to, to be there and to be the you that you really are. Because the other thing about opportunities is you can choose at any moment in time to be the person you think other people think you are mm -hmm. versus allow yourself and then opportunity to be the person you truly are and to share your light, not the light of someone else and to share your voice, not someone else's voice. And to have the strength to speak your words and your truth. So a lot of relationships where you are a partner to somebody and they dominate, energetically dominate you, they shut you up. And all of a sudden you say, you find yourself saying, yes, yes, yes. When you say, no, like, are you kidding me? But if you say that, it's confrontational. So you get to a point where you shut down. And so when you have the opportunity to start to protect yourself, to start, start blocking it, and to then move forward, and if there's resistance, go ahead and remove the roots and allow yourself to um, to be free. And uh, occasionally, these people might be a little crazy, so you might need to get protection of other types, which would be on the, be beyond the conversation here today. But just, let's just say that <laughs> shielding that you get. That's a whole other opportunity. <laughs> That's the conversation we have with Jen and I. <laughs> But, it's, but, but from, a, from, a, from a light perspective, right, allowing yourself to envision a golden shield that you are safe and creating a safe space, right, to just be. And then, you know, finding a living quarter and energetically balancing it and finding a way that it's protected. And then knowingly let go of attachments, let go of wants and others that you once loved but are really bad for you. And by the way, it's not because anyone else told you they're bad for you. It's because you recognize they're bad for you. And without admitting to anyone else, you can block them, right? So it's not about, again, what you're tell, what you, how you show up to others, not the person you're referring to, but just the opportunity to be there for you, right? And so it's there's a lot of work that happens behind the scenes to help people find their freedom and that opportunity to be free. And, and, and then to be light driven uh, is a superpower. And so, so I, I do believe that everyone on this planet has the opportunity to have superpowers turned on. In fact, Absolutely. everyone has superpowers, they just don't know it. Or they don't admit to it or that willing to take the opportunity to embrace it. Mm -hmm. They feel like that, that doing so will make them not understood. Um, so that's a whole other set of, you know, a different spiritual plane to play with or an energetic plane to play with. But it's you know, it's, it's like there are, it's, there's multiple dimensions to operate in and around. Yeah. Uh, if you're just talking about the dimension that people physically feel and see here right now, that's limiting. Mm -hmm. um, but there's an unboundedness too. So there's there's a lot there, a lot of depth to it. It just it just really depends upon what the constraints you set for yourself and where you want to be, where, where you want to be heard. But the the power of the now is, should not be ever understated. And I. I a few years ago, I was at a meeting, going to a meeting, and I saw a poster that said, only dead fish go with the flow. And, and it, it took a minute. And I started to laugh as I was by myself, and people must have thought I was nuts, but it finally hit me. Because often I hear the expression, go with the flow. 
Yeah. But when I saw that poster, only dead fish go with the flow, that hit me as a message that came to me as an opportunity. Right. And and even to hold on to that, because usually I forget everything. It's like, particularly like if we have a channeling session, I may tell you great knowledge. I may tell you not so good knowledge, but I will not remember anything that is said in the period of time that we're speaking. Yeah. So, but I did hold on to the only dead fish go with the flow because I think it's kind of cute. And, and also it's a remembrance to, 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 to stand up for what you believe in mm -hmm. and for you to own that decision to where you go and where you flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I think about, you know, this is all about authentic conversation and authenticity is such a huge piece. And I know we've talked about that before, but this idea of opportunity you know, to truly be who we are, not who we think we have to be or who somebody else thinks we have to be or, you know, any of that. And, you know, also what was coming as you were talking was this idea of doing, because I think that we often associate opportunity with movement and flow in this sense, right? And and movement, but I think that with opportunity, there is also this quietness and this mm -hmm. ability to just be. We don't have to always be moving. We don't always have to be going. There doesn't always have to be um, change in, in, in the worldly sense um, because that ability to actually take the opportunity and be quiet, to just be in the moment, to allow yourself to experience whatever the experience is, whether it's labeled good or bad or, you know, happy or sad, <laughs> whatever it the is. The opportunity to actually sleep, to yeah. shut down. Detach <laughs> yeah. and, and actually embrace the quiet and, and not be subject to all the noise. I mean, so that you know, the opportunity to let go doesn't mean you're letting go of anyone's love. You're not saying no to anything. You're just loving yourself enough to take the time to breathe and, and to find another voice in yourself and to, to just find that quiet. And sometimes that's a quiet that may take 20 years to find. But once you find it, it's addictive that I want that. Yeah. 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 And it's it's a gift that you can give others in holding space for them so they can find quiet quiet. Because that's something that's that's a huge opportunity that we take. I know that you know, when we're all of us um coach people and stuff. So when we're in coaching sessions and stuff, you know, holding that space for for the person to just be and speak and 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 do what they need to do to process energy or whatever, right? And and just hold space for them while they do that. That's that's a beautiful opportunity to show that love in a very active way. Like you were saying, Jenny, yes. just holding space is like, just, I'm just going to be here for you. I'm here. I'm listening mm -hmm. to you. And yeah. that's, a, that's, that's valuable, I think, in life as well. Much like finding those moments of quietude, like you said, Joe. You know, sleeping. Yeah. And there's so much that sleeping comes in that. <laughs> Sleeping is good, but we're kind of busy at doing uh, dream time stuff, being multi-dimensional uh, beings as we are. <laughs> you know, s sleep is underrated and overrated, but at the same time, the, the, having the having the freedom to be. Yes. Uh, and, and, I, and I'll just go back to the idea that if you could find this space where you get to be who you are, your true self, yeah. and be authentic to yourself, and 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 allow that to come into the world. You will shock some people. I mean, frankly, if you find yourself, if someone is listening who realizes they're intuitive without understanding what the word intuitive means or you're an intuitive healer because you can talk to a stranger and tell them exactly what's happening in their life without them even ever talking to you and they freak out, then they listen and it's like, how did you know this? Am I on candid camera? Like, how is this possible that you know these things about me because we never spoke before? But if you allow that to come through, and not be in denial of it and not be defensive of it, but allow you that to be a way for super connecting with some folks and helping other people just be. And it's, it's it takes a lot for some people to even be comfortable in their own skin. So they put on a costume every day because it's easier to wear someone else's skin and someone else's face than to share the face that they have. But if you can allow yourself the opportunity to come through you are giving yourself a blessing that no one else could ever give you, right? And that, and hold on to that truth and hold on to your true self. You will encourage many others to do the same because I believe in the world we're in now, there are too many people who are who don't feel comfortable being who they are. Mm -hmm. So they come through as others because for them that's a safe route. Not they're not lazy, 
they just don't feel comfortable. And so if you could find a way to encourage people to be true, and it's not that they're not truthful, but but they're they're suppressing things about themselves because they don't fit in because they're misfits. Frankly, newsflash, we're all misfits. We, we, we are all misfits. There's something about us that's odd, that's special, that's unique. We're all on a spectrum of some sorts. Doesn't matter whose spectrum we're on, but we're on a spectrum. Yeah. We're not here to judge nor to be judged, but to accept who we are for what we are, for what we can do and what we all can do. Yeah. And so when we can find others to have those special effects and to encourage them to share their voice, the one thing we can tell them they is they, they matter and they will be heard. Mm-hmm. And their voices will resonate and bring more light and more love into this universe. Absolutely. And I think that that's, you know, when you talk about that, what comes is this idea of how we we give up opportunity to be authentically ourselves because of fear. Yes. Right. And because of, of not wanting to take the risk or take the opportunity to change our situation, um, to leave something that maybe we feel we're trapped and not able to be authentically ourselves with, um, you know, and fear of of how the, the 3D world is going to impact that. And so one big thing I think in all of this and you talk about now and and all is this idea that, you know, we have the ability to tap into what is unlimited source. Mm-hmm. And we have the ability to access that, but we put those limitations on by what we believe and by how we show up and how we act out those beliefs. And so, you know, if we're able to, you know, it, one, one thing I remember years ago being told was, you know, I might say, oh, I would really love to um, experience X, Y, Z, right? And then I put this form in my mind of what I want that to actually look like or how I want that to play out. I've just limited my ability with that experience. And I might have something else that actually shows me that, but because I'm looking for it in this specific way, I'm missing out on opportunity to actually have that lived experience. And so this openness that, you know, Jeff, you were talking about is so very important because if we don't necessarily give a specific definition to something, um, we're actually more able to experience it on on so many different levels. Because we don't really see everything that's, that's good for us, right? We think something is good for us, but really we don't know the big picture all the time. So we need to be open to that or better. And that's something that I always, you know, when people talk about manifesting, I'm like, okay, well, you can you can ask for what you want, but make sure you add this or better. Because the or better might mean something even more beautiful. And that takes away that limiting, the limiting belief. Although I, I do find that when people build a manifestation practice, they will um, sometimes freak out when their dreams, wishes come true. So I warn people just to be careful what they wish for because it's hard to see the power they have and how unlikely an event happened that they were wishing for, asking for, manifesting for. They then realize that they're powerful. And so I have to just caution them to stay on the positive side of things, keep a positive mind, be open to what can be, and think positive and embrace positivity. Um, cause it's, it's unfortunately, but as much as we wish good for ourselves, sometimes we wish bad for ourselves without realizing what that means. That's right. And bad can happen almost easier than good. It's, 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 uh, you know, in this world, bad things get amplified much more than good things get amplified. And so it's, um, a blessing and to have the opportunity to bring goodness in Mm-hmm. And uh, responsibility, you know, it's like with, you know, yes, with great power comes great responsibility, which comes from uh, Spider-Man. And I, and I think that we can bring that, you know, to the, to, to, you know, to, to every plan we want to, that opportunities are there. We, 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 we can facilitate them. We can use them as signs for guidance. And at the same time, remember that each time we have that opportunity, we, we chose what to do. But the opportunities that we take for ourselves are not necessarily um, symbolic of an opportunity that someone else. And so if you're at that at that fork in the road and I took a right and you took a left, it doesn't mean that I went in the wrong direction or you went in the wrong direction. We have to understand that opportunities usually are for each of, each of us. 
and what's meaningful mm -hmm. to each of us may be different based on our life experiences, based on our own value system, and based on the prior opportunities that we executed upon. And so it's as if, if we're playing a game, your opportunities that you get presented in your future may be based on the opportunities you said yes or no to in your past, which will be different than the ones I did. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, and, and someone always brings up, are you regretful for anything? And I may think for a moment, but I'll say no, mostly because if I have to, if I regret things and I would not be here at this moment, because it was only a whole series set of circumstances that got me invited to the show at this moment in time. And my now is fully dependent upon every mistake I made, every good thing I did, and everything that happened preceding the time we went live at this moment. And it's like congratulations to everyone watching right now, because no matter what you went through, you've been through every hardest, the hardest day of your life, the hardest moment of your life, you've made it through already. And I believe you'll make it through again. And we forget about those things, right? So we have the opportunity to, ex to, ex to ex greatly express ourselves, greatly embrace the good, greatly let go of what hurts, but just understand that it's a blessing to be, right? Nothing is, grant nothing is guaranteed just the opportunity to be in that now, in the moment, at the moment we have, not the moment that's next. And that's why I advocate to take every opportunity for what you can and take the most of it. Some moments are just moments. Some moments will last forever. It's up to us to decide what we're doing with them. Interesting, mm -hmm. Shem says, Eichsen, and everything is awesome, right? But lessons are good. Yeah. I think that there's a bit of a negative connotation to that, right? Well, but look, it's, not I, I think it's, it's not, it's a lesson, not necessarily a test, right? But it's, you know, it's right. life gives us lots of tests. We learn from the, we learn from our life, the good and the bad. But as I heard recently, let us not be judged by the last bad mistake we made. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because we are all going to make mistakes. Yeah. That's what we're here for. <laughs> we, we make terrible mistakes, right? Our judgment is skewed. Um, yeah. We said yes, we should have said no, but we didn't have the strength to say no. Lots of relationship challenges that we get ourselves into is because we didn't have the strength to say no at the time we had to say no. Yeah. We had, we, we had the opportunity to get out of something, but we felt the pressure yeah. to say yes, and then we paid the results of the yes as much as the pressure for the no. So it's depending upon circumstances. I just find that uh, we, we, we need, that's the other, by the way, the opportunity not to hurt yourself, right? The opportunity to embrace all of you for every day, the good and the bad, the person you are, the person you'll be, and know that you're loved, and know that you matter, and know that your voice will be heard, right? And, and don't get negative on yourself, right? We have the opportunity all the time to go low, I ask for you to consider to take that opportunity to go high, stay on the light side, mm -hmm. embrace the good, even when it's hard to find, know that the light will be there. Yes, sometimes we have to walk into darkness to appreciate the light, to appreciate the power that we have, but there is light at the end of the tunnel, even if someone took out the budget for it. It is definitely there. Envision <laughs> the light and see your shadow on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting, this idea too, like everything being a lesson and, and really, you know, the mind wants to label everything good and bad. It wants to judge everything. It wants to put it into a category and it wants to try to understand it, but it's all just experience, right? And so if we look at life as opportunity, sure, there's probably a lesson in anything, um, but it's also just an experience. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to say it's good or bad. You know, I, I so many times I have clients say, you know, I, as you know, to Jeff's example, like I'm stuck in this relationship and I can't, you know, get out of it. And, you know, I don't want to waste another so many. It's not a waste. It's just an experience. Yeah. And you've had the experience. And if the experience doesn't serve you anymore, you have an opportunity to change the experience. And, and right. And, and the, but, the challenge, of course, is finding the strength to terminate that opportunity to, to it's the strength to say no to say yes i want out and because the fear comes in and what's going to happen if i if my wish is granted it's like i'm out of it now i'm free like oh my god and then it's like and then you get jealous of maybe the other person because they're seeing all great because because you broke up with them 
they now have these great things happening to them. So you were like gatekeeping them from good things. And now you're jealous of someone who you just don't like, and it's all messed up. Right. So, so <laughs> let, let us not be judgmental for her on ourselves for doing what yeah. feels like the right thing. And yeah, we don't need labels. We need to breathe to be, and to know that the mm -hmm. golden light that you feel that you can see, you know, and I, as much as I advocate looking, finding darkness to look up and see the night sky, if you can go out, if you can make it a part of your practice that once a month, go out for it and see and experience a sunrise, experience a sunset, mm -hmm. see the, the natural mm -hmm. light, the golden hour of light, and just see and feel that energy coming upon you and feel those golden rays of light. It does recharge you. It does reset you. And you may even get a message or two about that. And it's very, a very powerful way even if you don't have a practice to meditate, if you don't have a practice to breathe and to do anything else, to understand that the world can be beautiful if you allow yourself the chance to see it. So true very much. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely recharges us to be in nature. Yes. Right? To feel trees and the grass and the moon and the sun and the you know, all of those. And you've got the four elements out in nature of all the time anyways. So, you know, that's magic. That's what alchemy is. Alchemy is taking all four elements and putting them together with energy. So when we go out and feel that, which is our energy, we can create our own magic. Magic yes. within. Well, and I think in this, it's about making the opportunity too, mm -hmm. because so many of us are so caught up in the day to day and everything else that you're doing. And if you don't make the opportunity to go out in nature mm -hmm. and to have those experiences, it's very easy sometimes to just, you know, get caught up and go, oh, well, I didn't have a chance or, oh, I didn't. It's, you know, there are certain opportunities in life that we, we have to make the choice to actually open those doors for ourselves. Yeah and walk through them yeah and that's yes. not always easy you know because we do have all the social pressures of of everybody mm -hmm. else it, you, in the human design aspect there jen there's one of the one of the personality types right that that really takes on the, the opinions of everyone else do, which one is that do you do you remember what off yeah well there's 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 so many layers to it, but I think what you're talking about is the the five in the if if you have five somewhere in your personality line, you it's a projected piece, and so you're constantly having people project on you what they perceive you to be, and then that need to kind of fill that, and you know if that's not a role for you, not an opportunity to take, right? Then we end up into what it's called as the heretic, right? And so now we're taking on this position of trying to fill a role that's not actually ours to fill, right? And so really being mindful of the pressures that we have in our design even and, and how that shows up for us in, in our day to day. Mm -hmm. And it, mm -hmm. But this is really a key for that idea of like saying no. It's so important to be able to say no to certain things so that you can say yes to other things. And, that, and that's not right? so obvious to folks either. I mean, because if people think of opportunity knocking, you, you, they think you the pressure is you must say yes. Mm -hmm. But you know what? If, if the person the, the opportunity is being knocked is from an from an ex who wants a second chance, just say no now, because you know it's not going to have a good ending, no matter what you say or do. It's just, just wasting your time. So just stop, stop! <laughs> don't do it! No, just don't do it. Don't empower, because the opportunity is for them, not for you. It hurts you, and just yeah. makes them stronger. So, And that's, by the way, when you, if you find that people are bullying you or otherwise... Uh, attacking you, you know, I, I don't, I've learned not to respond to people who are attacking. And it's not because I don't mm -hmm. believe in the opportunity to defend myself. It's just that certain personalities take whatever is the fact that you respond to them as a um, super strength and they will continue to pound away at you. And, and the, what you, the way to lose that opportunity of strength is by giving them the power. So ignoring as hard as it may be so an attack can be the opportunity for you to ignore and to show your strength and it's not and not because again you don't want to respond but sometimes not responding gives the best protection you can ever get because the moment you do respond 
I've never seen yet a way to turn that response into something healthy or positive, and it's just not worth it. Right. Yes, it's just not yeah, worth, it, right? it's so, worth it. So, so yeah, so if you're ever tempted, just say no. And, and, and just find some <laughs> other thing to do. Pick up, you know, find the new passion, find the new hobby, text a stranger who you haven't spoken to in years, then, then deal with an ex who's just on the, on the go because it does not help. Um, yeah, and so anyway, it's, uh, it's opportunity, a wonderful thing. It's great to manifest them. It's great to say yes and no to them, depending upon the circumstances. Understand your role and don't be so selfish to think the opportunity was meant for you. It, it, I, I do believe that we are con that we are that we um, help empower others, and that we may have a, a secondary role in these opportunities. And mm -hmm. it might very well be that we now have to go out and we have to contact others to, on your behalf energetically. So people, so some opportunities are connections through others, and you very well may be a connected opportunity for someone. Not so much the opportunity coming to you, but through you, it opens up the door spiritually energetically for others to prosper so if you allow that to be um and and you know maybe it's a new york thing i'm not in new york anymore but it's like sometimes people are skeptical of uh, opportunities because why are you being offering me an opportunity what's in it for you yeah and the fact yeah. that it's actually a chance to share love and light that's what's in it for me yeah not well understood you know there is an opportunity to be selfless selfless self, self, not be selfish right? right to be open and flowing and giving but yeah. for so many people that's a that, that's a trigger like how dare you be kind to me like well, what are you looking for in return it's true what's and, and so if we can learn to let go if that's a, rea a visceral reaction a trigger that that there are kind there are kind people in this world there are people who love first yeah. They give first and they share first. Mm -hmm. And yes, they're taking care of themselves and they're doing good. And it's a blessing to say yes, or at least to be open to what they're saying. You don't have to agree with them. Mm -hmm. And frankly, you might pass the opportunity to someone who needs it even more. But mm -hmm. let's at least allow ourselves to be open to receiving and not shut down the folks just because it's not socially acceptable or you want to be overly cautious. Why are they being so nice? And yes, also it is true, some people do change. People go through life, they have experiences, they're not always transmitted, and people to whom you were once not connected who didn't feel good with can shift and can change and come, come over back on the other side and be the most giving, loving people you will ever meet. Only if you give them a chance. And by the way, in that case, it's your intuition that will guide you. Because I, I, I am someone who never advocates to walk into harm's way. Never. Like, I will never say go to harm's way. But if you have someone who you dealt with 30 years ago, who for some reason, you know that they had a life changing um, accident experience, something happened where they fundamentally are different than who they used to be, and they say so, and it feels inside to you like that's true, then that's the door opening you give yourself to give that person a chance again. But otherwise, I, I'm pretty hard steady about, no, I'm not going to empower people to take, to, to, to use just to make them stronger and just saying no works too. So it's, uh, it, look, the opportunities themselves open up doors and, do and, and, and many books of that opportunity. And I think it's just how we take it, how we accept those blessings and how we in turn share them that will help people better understand who we are, what we do, and when mm -hmm. we do things. And speaking to that, the, the you know we're never the yeah. same person two days in a row, and so nor 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 is anyone not, else. Not even the same, not even the same day. Let exactly. alone if you're channeling the whole time. You know, you'll tell me of things I said during the show, and I'll have no memory of it. And I promise I'll have no memory of it, but it's understood. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think this really does hone in the idea of you know connecting to our authentic self, our true self, and how important that is along the way. And if we can do that, then we have the ability to harness opportunity in a way that is not outside of ourselves either, mm -hmm. right? Because opportunity is often looked at as something beyond us. And yet we have the ability to harness opportunity within us. You know, the, the thing about right? those opportunities at times though, particularly when you're close to somebody, is that the people closest to us are sometimes the hardest to talk to 
if you ever notice yourself, if you if if you lived in a time when you could travel someplace, people would open up socially to a bartender or to a taxi driver and share the most innermost secrets with them, or looking your for advice. I'm sorry. <laughs> or your local empath. Or your local empath. <laughs> empath and open up. Or the. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Right. your local empath, not your, not your global empath, it's just the local oh, one. Global, they're they're going to gonna share the innermost secrets, but they have a wall up with the person to whom they must talk to and they don't feel they can't. It's like, why is that? Because we, we shield ourselves, right? We protect ourselves because for some reason, part of the human form is to be afraid of those encounters. Mm -hmm. And if we could solve for that, either it means, oh, by the way, you're in a relationship, get the heck out of it. It's just bad for you. And this is your energy, energetic self saying you're shielded. And and, no, and, and if it's going to be bad to have this conversation, then why are you there to begin with? And so maybe it's a sign to, or, of an opportunity to get out. Or it's an opportunity for you to open the door, clear the air, and be better understood. But the fact that we often go, go to others to share these secrets and to have those conversations. And then there's the other side of it is the conversations we never had. If you ever lost a relative, lost a loved one, and never could in the physical realm say, I'm sorry, or I accept you, or whatever, or give them a chance to hear you, it's these are times, conversations. That's why the now to me is so important, mm -hmm. because I don't have regrets for being in the now. I have no regrets for what is said. As when you speak, when you are your authentic self, you speak your truth. You may not always remember everything that is spoken, but you know that you're speaking your truth and you have confidence to be the you that you are, not the you that one wants you to be. And I think com that comes with a superpower that's a truth that others may not be able to handle. But if you're true to yourself, there's, I don't know of any other play way to be, place to be than in your honor plane. And that if you allow that, if you could honor yourself and speak your truth and live your truth, you'll know that you'll at least not be at odds with anything energetically around you. Mm -hmm. True. And that authenticity is that, that intimacy that it creates. Yes. Yes. And, important and, to, right. And that creates. You know, look, I, I think empathically intimacy is something we live with and love, right? We, we mm -hmm. have this very intimate relationship with others whose energies we feel the energies which we didn't ask for but we get and uh, mm -hmm. so, so that if you're if you're feeling and you're knowing and you're and you don't have any way to share that it, it becomes harder to uh you know I, I, again it com comes from the fact that you can actually understand what's happening from far away and there is a challenge of what are you going to do with that uh, if anything right so it's um yeah. It's hard, and, and it's a blessing at the same time. True. Mm -hmm. yeah. And sitting with something is a blessing too. We often think we don't want to wait, we don't want to sit with something, we don't want to ride the wave. We don't that piece of it, but there is blessing in that as well, an opportunity in that. Yeah. Every mm -hmm. day is an opportunity. You know, mm -hmm. Every day is an opportunity to have a good day, to take another chance, to, to right or wrong. Every day is an opportunity to breathe and be and be the person who you want to be today. And the person you want to be today doesn't have to be the person you were yesterday or even three minutes ago. Mm -hmm. There, There's no sense of continuity of self if you don't allow yourself the opportunity to be and to go in those directions that you know you need to go, that your inner compass takes you. Don't say no to you just for the sake of saying no when yes is possible. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yes, lots of lots of knowledge and wisdom there, Jeff. So said I. Um. <laughs> <laughs> lots of channeling going on today. <laughs> uh, I live in the channel. What can I tell you? <laughs> you have a few beans around you. <laughs> Many, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, maybe that's another show. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. We get pretty woohoo on this one, but <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> oh, man. It's okay. I'm already forgotten what I've said, so it's good. Um, 
<laughs> well, now but, look, I, I, I talk about opportunity. I should thank you for the invitation to be here. So, and, and, okay. I, and I thank you for bringing the show to light and to bring life to it and to connecting with everyone who's here and everyone who may listen and to understand that opportunities are there for each of us to benefit from, to learn from and grow from. And that um, if anything, you know, let us think about the opportunities that matter for us, but for others that we can do, that we opportunities we can create for others. Mm -hmm. An opportunity that, we, that our presence will bring to help make this place a better place to be. Yeah, and working together is is a beautiful way to create opportunities for others. Co-creation is, is a gift and it's a blessing. Yes, exactly. Yeah, most definitely. Opportunity to be alive, Shanna says. Yes, that too. Absolutely. Living is good. L living in, in this plane is good usually. <laughs> and yet we live question. on multiple. Well, the same I, I have to say <laughs> usual. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah, look, it's, it, it's uh, anyway, it's, life is complicated. I'm not saying it's simple, but, but what, it can be fun. And I, I'm a fan of the fun. So embrace the fun opportunities and do what you can to bring more light and love into this world. And you will be remembered as someone who brought light and love into this world. Awesome. And what do you do for fun, John? I come here. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> well, we're super honored that you're here today. <laughs> I'm grateful to be invited. And I, but yes, for me, this is fun. This is a fun hour. This is a chance to be who you are, no judging, yeah. to have an open conversation and to be seen and perhaps heard. And and so for me, that is fun. So that's what I do fun. I. I, I have a line which I use often that I learned to take having fun seriously. And I, I, I believe in the fun. I believe in that we can do business by having fun. I believe if we could bring joy and delight to others, that we could find a mutual beneficial experience for all to benefit through and from. And that's a good thing. And so um, fun for me is connecting under the night sky for some. Sometimes it's sunrise to the sunsets. Sometimes it's feeling the sand on my feet near the beach and just grounding. Sometimes it's just allowing myself to find the direction I need to go. And even if I didn't know where I was starting from, I have confidence I'll end up exactly where I'm meant to be. Yes. yes. And that's that trust, right? Yes. That, that we have to step into in our opportunities in life. Yes. So, yeah. mm -hmm. Yep. Scary as it may be, one little step at a time. Yes. Even if as long as we're moving. We're doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Yeah. So thank you very much for joining us, Jeff. And do you want to tell people where they can reach you if they want to reach out for coaching? Uh, if they want to reach me, they could find out what I'm working on sometimes by going to pulver.com. And if they want to find me, actually talk to me, they can email jeff at pulver.com. That's an email that's 26 years old and still kicking. So um, we're ticking. So uh, that's and the, really, I'm easy to find, uh, and and people are welcome to connect. And uh, if, if depending upon what the opportunity is, they can reach out to me, and we can we can communicate um, energetically or electronically or verbally. It's uh, I'm open to all forms of communication. But if you're going to intuitively talk to me, be open to the fact that I might not tune in until later. <laughs> Because there is no time and space, I'm just saying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. And um, the other thing, do you want to talk about uh, some of the other things you're doing, Zula and Coffee House? And um, sure. Real, real quickly, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, depending upon what time zone you're in, because sometimes it could be Wednesday morning if you're in uh, outside North America, I host a networking events where people get to, where we maintain a safe space and where people have a chance to connect, not based on what work you do, but where your passions are. And all I ask for is for you to respect the other people who are around you. And um, I found that using a few words each, each time we have a group gathering has become a wonderful way to get to know people from all over the world from many different, many different walks of life. And so we, from in the Eastern time zone, we gather 9 p.m. Um, 9 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday nights and uh, 8.30 in the morning on Thursday mornings. And 
depending upon the time of year, we bring people from all over the world together just to connect and have meaningful connections. And if you happen to be a fan of live music, particularly uh, we'll call it uh, folk music, although it can be other forms of music, I host a live music show on Thursdays, usually at two o'clock Eastern. Mm -hmm. um, beyond that, I have other shows that are coming back uh, this fall season. I have a uh, talk show I do called the Jeff Pulver Show and Newsflash that's coming back. Um, and then I do conferences too, but really it's it's really, and I oh, ask the oracles. We, we had to ask the oracles for a long time. My friends Monty and Amy are working on a lot of new things and uh, I think ask the oracles will be back um, at least monthly every once in a while. So stay tuned uh, and that's fun too. And that's really a, uh, all sorts of shows, all sorts of opportunities there. It's just about a chance to be seen, to be heard. So thank you so much. I, much love to both of you, much light to, to all of you. And uh, just remember to be who you are. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you, Jen, for uh, for co-hosting this uh, this awesome show. And thank you to all the viewers who have tuned in to uh, to share your energy and share your experience and your love. Uh, we appreciate that. And I'm Tamis Cochran, Twilla Lifestyle Community, Twilla Lifestyle Academy. And we will see you next week, next Monday, same time, same place. Lots of love, everyone. Bye now. Bye-bye.